Hello and welcome to this session on Mahada 16.10. My name is Christina Höppner from Catalyst and I'd like to take you through what is new in this very latest version of Mahara, the open source ePortfolio system. We released Mahara 16.10 on the 21st of October 2016 and are very excited to present this new functionality to you. And we would very much like to thank everybody who contributed to it over the course of the last half year, and in some cases, even for a longer period of time. There are lots of new things in the system that I'm going to introduce you today. We are very excited as it also marks the first version after our 10th anniversary, which we just had at the end of September because in September 2006, the first lines of code uh, went into the Mahara code repository, making it available to other users, but the development team. So it's very exciting uh, to have a new version come out. So one of the very big new features in Mahara 16.10 is Smart Evidence. It is the first implementation of it, and um, we focused on features that are required by students in order to work with the competency framework and align their portfolios to them. In a way, it is marrying up what Mahara is known for and what is essential to Mahara, namely the personal learning environment and um, learner-centeredness, learner-drivenness, um, with institutional requirements of assessment or alignment of competencies to evidence and portfolios. Still staying true to what Mahara has been known for in the past and is also um, essential to us in order to provide a portfolio that is not just a portfolio on the learning management system, but really a portfolio by the learners and for the learners. So how do you do that? Well, we visualize results in an evidence map. So you set up a competency framework and then students can align their portfolio collections with the framework and visualize the results in an evidence map. So first, you set up the competency framework. Currently, this is done in a simple text file and instructions for that are available on the user manual. Once this file has been uploaded to the Mahara site, um, everybody who has access to the competency framework can add it to a collection of theirs if smart evidence is allowed in their institution. Then students can associate a page with the standard via the annotation block, and they can do that either on the page itself or via the evidence map. They need to provide an annotation in order to align their portfolio page with a particular standard in order to give an assessor an idea why they think their learning evidence goes with a particular standard. Then the icon changes to a blue ring, making it visible to the assessor and letting them know that um, there is evidence that they should be taking a look at. When they look at the evidence, they can then make an assessment and also place feedback. And the assessment criteria can be adjusted for each framework so that the language definitely meets the framework's language. And once they've done that, their assessment is uh, captured uh, using different icons so that it is very easy for learners as well as assessors to see which standards have already been completed or still need more work. So we look very look forward to your feedback on this very big new functionality and working more easily with competency frameworks. People have already been working with competency frameworks in the past in Mahara. Smart evidence will make that much, much easier and um, therefore also more comfortable, provide visual cues for people um, so that they can see more clearly where they are at in their progress. Another big new functionality for Mahara is Mahara Mobile. It is a new app in 
the beta version, it is available for Android devices. But of course, we are looking into making it available also on iOS as soon as possible. It makes it possible to collect evidence offline for Mahada portfolios, similarly to Mahada Droid and portfolio app that were available in the past. The added advantage of Mahada Mobile though is that you can log in with any authentication method on your Mahada site or also with the token. So at the first screen, you simply provide the URL to your Mahada site. And when the mobile app APIs have been enabled, you will be presented with the screen letting you know with which authentication methods you can log in. And these may be different from your site, um, depending on what is allowed there. Then you get to a screen where you see basic information about yourself. And on the add screen, you can upload a file or add a journal entry. On Android, you can basically upload any file that um, you stored on your device. On iOS uh, devices, you will only be able to upload images and videos, as these are restrictions from Apple. On either platform, you can add a journal entry and um, therefore also start your reflections already on your mobile device or when you are also offline and don't have your Mahada site available. Once you're done with your evidence collection, um, learning evidence collection that is, uh, you uh, tap the pending tab and there you can see all the individual uh, files or journal entries that you have available. You can still edit them, you can delete them, you can add text to them, descriptions, and then simply upload to your Mahada site where you will have them available to put into your portfolios. But of course, we also have a number of other new features in Mahara that I'd like to briefly present to you. Besides those two new big ones of Smart Evidence and um, Mahara Mobile. You can now hide deleted comments in certain contexts, namely when there's no comment coming after them. Um, if there is a comment after a deleted one, then we do keep the notice of comment deleted um, and for transparency purposes, because it might be missing a particular piece of information that is required to understand the follow-on comment. However, if there is no comment after it anymore, then it can be deleted safely um, without keeping a log of that it's been deleted. We also made it possible to copy the block configuration of tag to journal entries, allowing you to also use this block now for uh, template pages and providing tags that you'd like your students to use in their journal entries. And when they copy the page, they will and um, assign those tags to their journal entries, they will show up in that block. It is now also possible to duplicate groups thanks to funding from PH Bern in Switzerland um, so that you can set up similar groups for different um, study groups of students without um, big fuss because it takes along the group configuration, any pages and collections that you've created in the group, as well as artifacts. Thanks to funding from the Australian National University, you can export group membership from any group on Mahara in order to then um, use it to upload that any changes of that group membership to manage your groups more easily. And this is, as I mentioned, not just um, is for both manually created groups as well as CSV file created groups. Another functionality that goes in that domain and was funded by ANU is the export of the group settings. And that allows you to also change those settings, upload the CSV file again, and manage any groups on Mahara by, via CSV file, no matter whether they were created manually um, by an administrator or whether they've been already uploaded via CSV file. Thanks to funding from Switch Portfolio, um, run by Switch in Switzerland, 
uh, you can now mark suspended and expired users really easily um, because that is done automatically for you so you can spot any of those inactive users quickly. There is also a clear caches button available for when you made uh, changes that require the, um, the clearing of the cache in order to have that new functionality shown rather than having to do that on the server manually. We also made improvements to the web services, including making a connection manager available to set up connections to other software more easily to integrate other systems and also to expand the mobile APIs, in particular for Mahara Mobile. Simple SAML PHP is now also a managed dependency in Mahara, meaning that you install uh, Simple SAML PHP directly with Mahara and can then also configure it directly in the administration area. It is possible also again to auto-create accounts with SAML on multi-tenanted site. Um, in the past, we needed to remove that functionality due to security concerns, but there is a way now of making it available again. And not so much a new feature, but rather a removal of a feature is uh, that we are not able to use persona authentication anymore. Um, since the Mozilla Foundation is retiring the service at, as of the end of November 2016. And therefore, we provide an um, automatic way of transferring all persona accounts to internal Mahara user accounts um, without you having to do that all manually. All your learners who used persona in the past need to do is um, go to the lost password screen, put in the email address they used to connect with Persona, and then simply um, have a new password sent to them. All these new features, as well as a few others, um, other small ones, are available for review in the user menu, where you can quickly check out what's new, how to work with them under manual.mahara.org and make sure you look at the user manual for Mahara 16.10. And there you can read up on all the things that I've shown you today in order to get a sense of uh, the new features. And then we hope you'll be able to start working with Mahara 16.10 very soon and look forward to your feedback.